Hey! So, I apologise for the vlog type style I'm recording on my phone with the lav mic. Um, I just wanted to do an intro because I realised I forgot to do one. Uh, I'm currently in my garage. You might recognise this. This is going to be a project I'm working on. It's obviously the faceplate of an original Xbox. Um, and I want to build a small PC inside it and use it in my TV in there. Uh, so, uh, if that sounds interesting, keep watching and we'll go through a dry run of the components I've got so far. Hey, so I'm testing a couple of new cameras, uh, or rather a new recording mode because I'm shooting this in 60 FPS rather than 30, um, and I'm just about to do a dry run of this, which is my pile of parts that I want to use for my Xbox. So I'll take it all downstairs and we can do that. Now everything is downstairs, we can kind of start building it. Um, got some tools. I have a warthog and some hunters over there, which is very appropriate. Um, and then on top of my, on top of the potato PC, I've got uh, a little Sony action cam, which um, should be recording all of this. I think it can see, it can see well over there. So we should be, we should be good on that front. Um, and then, yeah, let's, uh, Let's start by going through some components. So let's move that out the way. Uh, this is the motherboard I've chosen, basically because it was um, very price reasonable. It's a B450 board, so it should be, you can see it's got this, uh, it's got a sticker on for Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. We actually don't need that because what I'm doing is I'm gonna be using this, which is an old, uh, come on, come on camera. Please, please focus. Well, it's a, uh, it's a Ryzen 3 uh, 1200 or 1300 or something. It's a, it's a Ryzen 3, basically. It's not anything serious. And it's in the packaging of a Ryzen 5 because I didn't have the original packaging. Obviously that was in a PC, so we need to clean the thermal paste off. But yeah, in here, we've got uh, the Wi-Fi. Oh, that was the other thing. It has Wi-Fi built in because I don't have a cable. I don't have a wife, uh, an ethernet cable running down to below the TV and I want to put it somewhere here so I can show, so I can play games on the TV on it. Um, so here's the motherboard itself, still in, its, uh, still in its packaging. It's a mini ITX in case you hadn't guessed from the fact it's only seven inches square. And in here we've got a single stick of DDR4 RAM uh, I believe it's 3000. This is again, not the right packaging. I'm just using this packaging for, because I don't have anything else. And as, to, as far as storage goes, we're using an Intel, uh, an Intel 600P uh, SSD because they are cheap and good. And yeah, it's a PCI SSD. So we should be getting crazy speeds uh, and it's 512 gigs. So that should be enough because I'm not going to be installing anything super huge on here because of, you know, the power restraints and everything. Let's put that out the way. Uh, and then, so we've got the, the Ryzen, Ryzen 3 processor. And then this is not the right GPU because what I want to do is use a low profile GPU. So a half height one. Uh, this is a 1050 Ti that has actually been in many things. This is kind of a uh, <laughs> this is kind of one of the, one of my stock components that I've used a lot and you'll see it a lot in my videos if you watch my videos. Uh, and then the last thing I've got, which is, uh, an RGB strip that I bought from, <laughs> that I bought from, um, Five Below. Uh, in terms of cooling, I've got a Noctua, uh, NHLA L9A, which is a very, very thin cooler. And I do love Noctua. Um, even though their brown and beige fans are absolutely hideous. Luckily, we won't have to worry about that because, again, it's going to be sitting inside the Xbox shell. No worries there. Oh, by the way, I did not gut a working Xbox. I bought this from eBay for like five bucks and it was absolutely full of dead cockroaches. So, <laughs> don't worry, I didn't, I have not broken into and destroyed a working Xbox. A working piece of classic gaming hardware. And yeah, all I did to the Xbox, all I've actually done so far to the Xbox is uh, Dremel out this, uh, which is if we get the uh, IO shield, that will fit the IO shield. But we may need to move that around because uh, of where the, because of the power supply and where the graphics cut output and I have this little HDMI extension. We'll figure that out. Again, this is gonna be video one in a series where I actually do this. Um, and then power supply. This is a Seasonic 
I believe the the uh, Seasonic 300 watt power supply. I believe the name for this form factor is Flex ATX, but I really don't know. <laughs> it's very unclear what the what it actually is. Um, but you can see the the model number out there, SSP 300 sub or SUB, I should say. Uh, and yeah, it's it's small enough to fit, small enough to fit like that in there in the Xbox. So it should be good enough for what I need. Um, what's funny is the listing said it was uh, fully modular, and apparently fully modular means you can unplug, yeah, you can plug in everything or you can unplug everything. So you see, we've got the standard 24 pin, we've got the standard 24 pin, got the eight pin there for mother CPU power, and then uh, SATA and uh, a fan and Molex. And I don't actually need any of those because uh, GPU draws from the motherboard and the uh, SSD, wherever that is, doesn't actually need uh, external power at all because it's obviously M2. So I'm thinking about maybe trying to disconnect from the inside here or cut them off, uh, but I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, that's why. Oh, and lastly, I have my Windows install disk, which is a very pleasing blue color. Um, yeah, that's just a normal USB stick. So let's get to building. It is always astonishing to me just how small M2 drives are. So this is in its packaging and you see the actual mounting for it is on the bottom of the motherboard. So we're, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of just wild to me. And you can see it's a PCIe one because we've only got one key taken out there. Uh, SATA M2 SSDs have two keys taken out. As you can see, the CPU is absolutely filthy. Still got the old thermal paste from the old PC that it was in. So I'm just gonna be using some uh, isopropyl alcohol and a soft tissue to clean it off and get it ready for the new thermal interface. So now we can see it's much cleaner um, and we can see that it is actually a Ryzen 3 1200. Um, which is a quad core, non hyper threaded. It was kind of the lowest of the low when the Ryzen, when the first Ry batch of Ryzen processors came out. But we're pairing it with such low end uh, graphics hardware that it really shouldn't be a problem. And since it's a B450 board, uh, if I really need to put a say 3600 in here, I totally can. So now that's in, um, what we've got to do is fit the Noctua cooler uh, and uh, <laughs> and then the graphics card and turn it on and see if see if all these parts I've bought work. Um, what I'm going to be using instead of thermal paste is actually some thermal grizzly uh, carbonate pads. Oh, <laughs> pad jokes on the on the packaging. I actually had a, a friend of mine in uh, Germany send these over early, but uh, since then they've actually been made available in the US. These are essentially uh, little pads of carbon um, which act just as, uh, which act as the thermal interface between the CPU and the cooler, essentially replacing the uh, uh, thermal paste uh, that is traditionally used. And in my testing and others testing, they are just as good. So I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that in this very, very small relatively shell, they will, uh, they will keep it cool. See the uh, carbonate pad itself is extremely small and thin and uh, delicate, <laughs> uh, and it is relatively easy to tear them. So I'd rather not do that. So that's why I'm being very, very gentle. And so the way the Noctua cooling uh, cooling mount works is you've got these two brackets, 
uh, that match up with a back plate that goes on back. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna stick the pad on there, flip the motherboard over, and then screw it in to the back plate upside down. Now look at that. Um, the the large is the <laughs> the motherboard, and you can see it's extremely short. It's uh, it's only a tiny bit taller than the uh, than the RAM, <laughs> which is good because if you look at the the height of the Xbox, it's not exactly a it's not exactly a full size case. Um, so it looks like I've actually put the <laughs> put this on pretty badly because I'd like to run the fan around uh, but the CPU fan is there or fan header is there so what I'll probably do is take the CPU fan off and swap it around now the CPU fan is mounted and I can kind of hide the cable down there um, lucky I only have one stick of RAM um, I wanted to grab the power supply and kind of sit it all in this um, case and see if we can maybe install Windows. <laughs> I don't really know. Oh, the Wi-Fi antennas. I should put those on as well. These little these little doodads. They go on the um, like standard motherboard motherboard Wi-Fi. But I have to say because I did just put a uh, Be Quiet cooler on my PC upstairs because um, the stock uh, AMD one's really noisy. The mounting hardware for uh, Noctua coolers is much, much better <laughs> than the mounting hardware on the Be Quiet. I got a Dark Rock TF, you probably saw, um, you've probably seen photos of it if you follow me on Twitter, um, and, mount and putting it on was an absolute nightmare, whereas this was literally four screws. It was just as simple as the stock AMD one with its, in fact, I would rate this much better than the, the stock AMD one that comes with these because they have the horrible little clips and you have to hook it over and kind of hook it under it's oh, it's a horrible horrible system so uh big props to noctua for that please make fans that aren't brown and beige thank you you can see now the uh the gpu is in I actually took the bracket off to make it kind of sit a little nicer Obviously, this is a full height card, and so it will uh, not fit inside the case. But that's why I want to get um, I want to get a half height 1650, um, just because it's the best half height card you can get. Um, unfortunately, it seems to be out of stock everywhere. Uh, even Zotac themselves. Zotac is a I really like Zotac card, so I wanted to get that one. Um, even Zotac has none in their online store. Otherwise, I would just buy one right now. Um, the only places you can get them is overpriced listings on eBay. Uh, and I don't really want to pay $250 plus for a $150 graphics card. Um, and bear in mind, I actually still have parts coming for the, for the RGB thing. Um, so it's not like I'm going to be finishing this today. Uh, I will hopefully make a part two where I finish up the build, make it neat, and do all do all that kind of thing. Another thing to notice uh, is my initial plan of putting the I/O shield at the back there uh, probably isn't going to work unless I use uh, a um, PCIe riser and put the graphics card over here. So run the riser underneath and have it sitting here. But that just adds it adds complexity. It adds kind of uh, <laughs> a point of failure. Um, I really don't know whether. Obviously, all these are going to be dremeled out. I'm going to be. I'm going to be dremeling all out, uh, uh, <laughs> making it kind of as as much space as possible. But you can really see this gives it gives you an idea of how just how small the power supply actually is. Um, but I'm still going to have kind of a uh, ketchup and mustard spaghetti coming out because if you look. That distance is what five inches from there to the 24 pin and then on the cable there's probably double that um, but I'll I'll figure something out I might I don't know try and make a bundle of cables along the back again this is just a test fit I just want to make sure everything that I have actually functions <laughs> which is important when you're uh, when you're building a PC because hey what if you have to uh, return something
So you can see, um, <laughs> that's it. That's all I need. 24 pin and eight pin. And then all of these, uh, I can just straight up get rid of, honestly. Um, I'll probably cut this cable tie, see how, see how they actually plug into the connector and maybe just disconnect from them from there. It might be the easiest way. Um, just because, look, that's extra, that's extra space that uh, is taken up inside this very, very small shell. Um, so yeah, let's, let's grab a power cable, an HDMI cable to go up to the TV, and we'll see if it actually turns on. Now it's actually plugged in. Um, uh, I'm going to be changing perspectives a little bit. Uh, and moving this action cam over there so you can see both what I'm doing and the TV. And Poogie's going to be watching us all. So uh, since <laughs> I don't have any of the front panel I.O., and I do have a plan for that, I want to use the original Xbox's buttons, um, but since I don't have any of the original, I'm going to have to look for the uh, front panel connectors, which I believe are down there and then uh, basically just touch them with a screwdriver to turn the PC on. So we can see it's the middle ones, uh, power button and ground. So let's move over here and try and find those two and touch them with a screwdriver. So I believe it's going to be that. And voila, voila. It's, it's on. So, so let's see. see because it shouldn't have anything to boot from. So let's see if we can get into the BIOS. So it's actually, it looks like, yep, my mouse and this is my mouse and keyboard. It's a Logitech kind of home theater keyboard. We can see our, uh, our memory is actually 2400, but it is, um, it is connected in single channel. Maybe I'll buy another one of those, who knows? See if single channel memory becomes a, uh, becomes a problem. Um, DRM frequency, that's fine. Uh, and let's actually just go straight to boot from, uh, uh, can I just boot straight from there? <laughs> that's a question. Yeah, there we go. Boot override. So let's boot from that and start installing Windows on the SSD. Windows is installing already, uh, getting files ready for installation. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that process a hundred times. I just wanted, let me unclip my mic because it's the... <laughs> Noctua fans are always wild. Noctua fans are always wild because they're just, it doesn't seem real that they're that quiet. Let me put the mic right up to it. Absolutely no noise at all, right? It's, it's insane. Noctua are just the best. <laughs> so while the NVIDIA drivers are installing, you can see that there, um, I'm going to be testing my cheapo, cheapo RGB strip to see if we can get it to light up just by touching the, uh, just by touching the contacts. And this is quite difficult because they don't line up 100% and I actually have something I ordered. Oh, do you see that? Flashed red. Installing, installing Steam games and I'm installing Prey and you can see the uh, network use is actually 11.8 uh, megabytes per second, which is very good on Wi-Fi, considering that's literally the same as I get <laughs> on a wired connection. You can see the Wi-Fi is only going up there to my uh, Ubiquiti access point, so it hasn't got far to go, but that's still very good. In fact, just for fun, I'm gonna do some Steam remote play um, although it doesn't actually look like it's picked that up. Ha! <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, or maybe my, um, PC upstairs is off. <laughs> that could be the problem. I'll be right back. So yes, my PC upstairs was actually off. That's why nothing was showing up. You can see now, um, 
it's going to be streaming from Acrocanthosaurus, which is my PC upstairs. So let's see how this runs. Over Wi-Fi, I'm a little bit, <laughs> a little bit nervous, uh, but we'll we'll see. So this is streaming from my PC upstairs. Um, unfortunately, it's not actually allowing me to uh, record anything <laughs> using the GeForce Experience, and I my capture card doesn't do. Uh, I don't want to mess with the capture card setup. Um, so <laughs> you get handheld video of it. Um, unfortunately, the menus looked extremely blocky and uh, and stuff. So yeah, you can really see the the macro blocks on the thing. Hmm, I'm not sure this is a per particularly great experience. Just because the <laughs> it's just so intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know this. Whoa, okay. I mean, it's not really that... Oh, yeah, no, this is this is pretty bad. I'm not sure I could play this. I think I'd rather run it locally at whatever resolution a 1050 can run, Hitman. So I was kind of an idiot. One, I got recording working, so I'll cut to a uh, direct capture from the PC. Um, the reason it was macro blocking so bad is because I was downloading in the background at the same time. So this is actually now proper. This is what it would actually be looked like. Um, and there's still latency, very noticeable latency. Also, my controller, Xbox controller wired, just straight up won't work, which is cool. But you can see this is actually much, much better. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, it's perfectly playable for a game like Hitman. And it's also running at 4K, which means it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, especially in a, in a map like Mumbai, which is one of the prettiest in the whole game, I think. So I wanted to do an update, so I shut it down, um, and I just wanted to test this out. So here, what I've got is some, uh, that's the front panel uh, buttons, uh, and they're with some extensions I bought off of Amazon, going to this little breakout board, which happens to be <laughs> the breakout board that sits behind the front of the Xbox. And you see one of the LEDs is on for some reason, that's the power LED. Um, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure this works. Oh, if I can actually, uh, okay. All right, well, forget that. Um, let's just hit the power button and see if it turns on. There we go. Hooray, the little breakout board works. It's just, I'm not sure why the uh, LED is on constantly when it's supposed to be the power LED. I don't know, we'll figure that out. You can see I'm now going to do a Cinebench R20 run. Um, this, <laughs> this CPU is not known for its uh, incredible horsepower. So <laughs> we'll see how well it really does in this. Um, I'm expecting, let's see. <laughs> I actually don't know what to expect, sub a thousand? Maybe about a thousand, let's say a thousand. Would you look at that, 1,099. <laughs> um, I was uh, pretty close, but actually 1,100 is not that bad. Um, and it got a little, uh, the fan went a little crazy, but uh, but I'm pretty pretty impressed with that. So I'm. This is the next morning, and I am testing various games on this PC. Um, this is my sister and I's Minecraft server that's hosted on a PC upstairs, um, and even through Wi-Fi. Although I guess it's local, so it doesn't really matter. But still, this is very very good performance for um, <laughs> for what I want to do with it. As you can see, I'm now in my garage um, and I have the Dremel out because I'm going to have to cut bits off here uh, and then grind down all of these little standoffs so I can replace them with standoffs that actually are in the right places for the uh, ITX motherboard. 
Um, so I'm going to be using a cutting disc and then a grinding tool. And this is my very well used, <laughs> very well used Dremel. Now you can see after some shoddy dremeling, I have a much larger space there and a hole there for the power cord, which I will need to neaten up. My one concern is I've actually removed quite a bit of the structural rigidity uh, of the bottom piece. So what I wanted to do was kind of uh, find a piece of aluminium um, or even like thin plywood, uh, which might be better because it's non-conductive to, to put on the base to kind of strengthen it up because I do want this to be, you know, I don't want it to be super delicate and fragile. So here we are. This is kind of a first test fit. Um, the power supply is a little tall. It's also off center because I need to do more dremeling. But you can see the motherboard and the low profile GPU do actually fit pretty well. Um, I really need to, so here's my problem with the low profile GPU. Here's the back plate and it's got the spikes on the bottom that sit in the normal PC case and then it's got the other bracket at the top that normally sits in the PC case. Um, and the holes I've cut here, well that's actually, I didn't cut that, but the, the top part of the Xbox does not uh, fit that. <laughs> so my options are, I can kind of, um, could either cut the low profile one that they uh, provided, I could cut into here and into there to allow it to fit, or if I don't want to waste the uh, low profile bracket, I could cut the um, full height bracket that it also came with. Um, so why you would spend extra on a low profile GPU and then put the full height bracket on, I have no idea. Um, let me just pull this off so I can show you. So obviously you've seen all this, you've seen the power supply. This is a Zotac uh, GTX uh, 1650. Um, and I know it is not the most powerful card. In fact, it's less powerful than a 1060, but it is the most powerful low profile card. And so you can see it's really the only card that I could get away with fitting in here because the Xbox is fundamentally pretty low profile. But yeah, you can see the Noctua cooler. I really like this cooler actually. It is extremely quiet and it's very, very low profile. So you can see it, it really doesn't take up much space. And I'm hoping that, um, so the front panel is all going to be blocked off, but I'm hoping that uh, the fact that the CPU cooler fins point this way, that forcing the air out this way, it will suck it in from the sides, hopefully, because uh, the sides are, you can see the sides are perforated, It'll suck it in from the sides and then push it out the back. That's my, <laughs> that's my ideal scenario uh, for cooling, but I guess we'll see on that one. As you can see, I've now got uh, a bracket on there, um, and you can see it's not actually the uh, low profile bracket. I sliced up the big one, um, and it does fit a little better, although I will probably have to take maybe a, <laughs> come on camera, focus please, uh, like one more millimeter off here, or do it a little neat, do it a little neater. But this is, yeah, you can see it's really lost, lost its structural rigidity after all the work I've done to it. Um, yeah, I'll, mm. <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to get that a little neater, but we'll see. So I just got home from a buddy's house, um, where we cut some aluminium and put some standoffs in it. You can see there, um, I did drill a hole for this hole in the back of the power supply, but I think I put it in the wrong place. So I'll just redraw that when I know. We also cleaned up the cuts a little bit, make that a little bit neater. And we also soldered up uh, these connectors for the front panel. So the front panel should now actually work. Well, eject's gonna be reset, but you get what I mean. So I just screwed it in and three of the four screws went in perfectly. Uh, 
And that one did not, as you can see. But I guess three out of four uh, isn't actually bad. And it is still keeping it off the thing, so we've got some clearance. Hey, can we focus, please? Thank you. And voila, this is it. Uh, it's not 100% done because there's no RGB yet. Um, but if we hit the power button, it does actually turn on. Wait for the TV to see it. Voila. And for the finishing touch, we've got the... Uh, what's the brand? <laughs> I don't remember. The Hyperkin Duke. Uh, which is a reproduction of the original Xbox Duke controller and is extremely large. If we put the PlayStation 4 controller below it, you can see just how large that is. Um, but it is actually a very high quality uh, reproduction. <laughs> and so I thought it was worth spending the money on. As you can see, we're on a, a GTX 1650. Um, which you may think, well, it's a crappy processor, or a cra crappy GPU, it's it's rubbish. Um, but to be honest, for what I want to play on this, like fighting games, <laughs> it's it's more than enough. Uh, you really don't need a big power to run things like Skullgirls. Um, and yeah, I may upgrade the CPU at a later date, but for now, Ryzen 3 will do. Um, Maybe on Black Friday if I can get a second gen Ryzen for cheap. I don't know. We'll find out. Just loaded up Skyrim here um, just to mess around. And I guess, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> that frame rate. Anyway, um, I'm going to cut to uh, direct feed and just go through a little bit of <laughs> my impressions of the near to final result. Um, and we'll go from there. So while Skyrim is playing, um, which is running not great, but I should probably turn the settings down to get it to run a little better, um, I wanted to give some final thoughts and some kind of impressions of, uh, <laughs> of the build in general. And really the biggest, the biggest takeaway is that that fan is loud. And I have a couple of theories about this. Um, and I know that's rich coming from the guy who's just repping Noctua, Pro, uh, Noctua CPU fans. Um, but they're not quiet when they're 100% all the time. <laughs> um, and I think even though, let me just check this, I'm pretty sure it's a low TDP, um, but problem is the chip's running at 100% all the time <laughs> because uh, it's only a Ryzen 3 1200, which is really, really not a powerful CPU at all. Um, and so when you're playing a game, unless you have the audio on the TV turned up, uh, you're, you're going to be hearing that fan and it's going to sound like, uh, well, it actually sounds a bit like a games console. Sounds like a PlayStation 4 when you load, <laughs> when you load up a demanding game on it. So I guess that fits the, uh, fits the aesthetic. Um, the Hyperkin Duke is fantastic. I highly recommend it. It feels, I was just playing Halo 1 with a Duke, uh, in, during a stream with, uh, Main Calico and the Hyperkin Duke feels 100% absolutely spot on to the original Xbox controller. Um, and his was an original one. That was one, the one he had. He has two Dukes and those were the ones he used as a kid <laughs> with him and his brother. So absolutely authentic. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit sick while I'm recording this. Uh, what else? Um, so in terms of... Uh, in terms of like usability, what I should have done and what a lot of other people do uh, with these Xbox builds is instead of um, just blanking out the uh, front ports with, uh, with plastic like I did, they turn those into USB ports. And that's really what I should have done because reaching behind to put a USB drive in is a real pain in the butt especially because there's no IO shield, so you're kind of just jamming your finger around, try and feel the USB port, uh, kind of totally blind, which is not that great. Um, and another thing is uh, I kind of messed up when I was soldering the front panel because <laughs> I was uh, I was foolish. Uh, I did not remember my, my school. <laughs> I wired all of the grounds to one ground uh, because I was, uh, the Xbox front breakout board uh, only has two actual grounds for the four that I needed. So that's two switches and two LEDs. 
um, and I wired them all into one and I was like well here's there's one ground great cool um, and it turns out you can't do that <laughs> so <laughs> So essentially the only thing I have plugged in is the power switch and so the LED light around the ring does not turn on but I it's, it's covered in heat shrink maybe I'll buy another dead Xbox and I'll pull the front panel off and redo it that way um, but uh, <laughs> yes it's uh, not amazing on that front um, but I have I actually had a friend over or we had uh, last weekend it was a big party uh, and we had someone who plays Skullgirls a lot and so I had him play Skullgirls on the Duke uh, on the PC and he other than the Duke being terrible he really enjoyed it I mean for a game like Skullgirls we're running 4k 60 locked absolutely uh, with no drop frames whatsoever on a 1650 so it's really not um, that's really not a bottleneck for that kind of game. And you know, like Jackbox and stuff, that's basically just an FMV connecting to a server somewhere. So yeah, <laughs> and I'll show like Screen Cheat and uh, Roof Rage and a couple of other kind of like party type games that uh, really work very, very well on this top type of machine. And the fact, it's, the fact it looks like an original Xbox just adds to the uh, whole kind of party. <laughs> adds to the, hey, you wanna play some, you wanna play some uh, OG Xbox with the Duke? You know, that kind of thing. So what am I gonna do next with it? Well, it's gonna live underneath the TV. Um, uh, for the foreseeable future because I do want to, to use it. Uh, maybe I'll run a great long Ethernet cable eventually through... The, the problem is my cable runs downstairs. I should honestly make a video about those because I, I yeah, when we bought this house I did a whole lot of really <laughs> stupid work on it like running all of the cables from the server closet through over the kitchen down behind the TV, have the TV wall mounted and all the cables come through a hole in the drywall. <laughs> which if it sounds like a bad idea, probably means it is. <laughs> um, so maybe one day I'll run a great long ethernet cable and have it wired, but for now Wi-Fi will do. Um, yeah, um, that's about it. As far as next project goes, uh, I was talking to someone on Twitter about doing a similar thing to a GameCube. So the GameCube is considerably smaller. In fact, if you, if you haven't seen a GameCube in a while, they are, I thought they were about the same size as an ATX motherboard, but they're really not. They are considerably smaller. Um, so that would have to be a Raspberry Pi or a, another single board computer. There's one called an Atomic Pi, which um, I was looking at on Amazon. It's about 40 bucks. Um, so maybe I'll buy a dead GameCube full of cockroaches on uh, eBay and an Atomic Pi and a Raspberry Pi 4, and whichever wins the performance test uh, between those two for uh, emulating old games uh, gets to live inside the GameCube. Perhaps that's a little teaser for a future video. It really depends on whether I can afford to spend uh, 150 bucks on <laughs> on a new Raspberry Pi, a new Atomic Pi, power supply, a dead GameCube and whatever else I might need. Um, because uh, yeah, <laughs> money. Um, so I guess this will be me signing off and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.